Good morning and welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday. I hope as you are gathering in your spaces, uh, you saw our announcements and reminders that you are welcome to have a fern or palm branch or other type of branch with you uh, to wave at different points in our service as we celebrate together on this uh, festival Sunday. As we gather for worship this morning, I just invite you to take that deep breath as you center your hearts and minds in our space this morning. And I just invite you to lay at the foot of the cross anything and everything that is pulling your attention away from being fully present here in this space to be with your brothers and sisters virtually across this space and time and to be present with our God, who is right there with you in the space where you gather this morning. So let us take that moment. Brothers and sisters, let us worship our God. Amen. A processional gospel reading from the book of Matthew. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem and came to, came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colts by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to your gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Who is he? This is the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us sing together all glory, laud, and honor. We welcome you to wave your palms at home.
Let us pray. The day of jubilation has arrived. Lay down your skepticism and pride. Stand open and revealed by the Lord our God who offers us the warmth of his love and the covering of his grace. The day, the day of, of jubilation, jubilation has arrived, arrived and, and so have we, the people of Christ, gathered together just as we are, for that is all Christ asks. Let us worship the Savior. Hosanna, Hosanna. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, the son of David. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Amen. Amen. Hosanna! 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 Praise God! Jesus! Hosanna! Hi, my name is John Grieby. Welcome to the children's message. What are your names? Declan and Ellie. Great job, you guys. Now, do you like parades? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Have you ever been in a parade? Yes. Do people cheer when you go down the street in a parade? Yes. Absolutely. And so right now, what you are doing was you were doing a little skit to remind us of how Jesus entered into Jerusalem. Do you think if Jesus came today that we would have a parade for him? Yeah. What do you think? Wouldn't that be fun to have a parade for Jesus? Yeah. Well, normally when we meet on yeah. Palm Sunday, we have a yeah. We wave fun. around palm branches, and you guys have some really cool little streamers there that you're waving around. Was that fun to do? Was that fun? Yeah. yeah. All right. Good job, you guys. So for Palm Sunday, we think about it as a time to celebrate Jesus, and it's like having a big parade. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll Bye. see you later. Bye. A big thank you goes out to the Haycox family for making this video possible. It was great fun watching the kids put together this virtual parade. We can think of Palm Sunday through the context of a parade, perhaps, or even a political rally. Seems appropriate during a time of campaign season. However, this does not seem to be the intent of Jesus. Even though the people cried out, King of the Jews, this was not what Jesus came to do. Jesus' ultimate sacrifice leads to us being able to understand and have an eternal king. As the son of God, he rules over the kingdom of heaven, promising us a place. During a pandemic such as this and dark times in our lives, it is so good to know that we have a king, a ruler, who is there for us, not just in this moment, but in eternity. During Holy Week, I hope that you are richly blessed with your family around you and that your family and friends are all safe. Let us take a moment to pray. May the Lord be with you. Gracious God, I give you thanks for all of the families and the children and the people in our communities. Please keep us safe and watch over us. And as we go about our days, help us to be kind and loving to one another. I pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Blessings to you and to your extended family and friends. The Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew 26, 14 to 27, 66. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat this Passover? Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, 
one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one other, surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. Then Judas kissed him. Jesus said to him, Fred, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. You think that I cannot appeal to my father? You will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. 
Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At least two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath of the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and the servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I don't know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. What, what is, is that, that to us? us? Speak to it yourself. yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are for money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. 
have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? Barabbas. Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Let him be crucified. Why? What, what evil has he done? Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Crucify him. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort, cohort around him. They stripped him, put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. And they put a reed in his right hand, and they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he could not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they gathered his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him until over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait! Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. 
he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, remember what that imposter said by the lie. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, I command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, the, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. You have a guard of soldiers. Go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure. With triumph, our Lord Jesus the Messiah entered Jerusalem. With sounds of music and exultation, our Lord Jesus appeared to be in a position of power. However, with heavy hearts, we are aware of the fate that awaits the Messiah. All the joy and shouts of Hosanna will fade away to be replaced by Jesus' words. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. If I, your Lord, have washed your feet, you ought to also wash one another's feet. With acts of humility and service, Jesus feeds us once again, and Jesus cleanses us with his own hands. Then we watch as Jesus is betrayed, beaten, and mocked. Unable to stand with him, we watch as Peter, who is so afraid, can't even admit that he knows Jesus. And our hearts break because we've been there too. We will mourn as the light of life is crucified. Shouts of Hosanna are now shouts of crucify him. Then on Saturday, we will wait in apparent darkness for the return of all our hope. We will keep vigil as Mary and other disciples did, waiting, watching, and weeping. Then in seven days, we will rejoice again as the sight of an empty tomb. Brothers and sisters, this is a holy week, a time set apart for us to walk with our Lord through death into life once again. We are a people of faith who do not shy away from the promise of new life, and we recognize that that promise comes hand in hand with unwanted death. We are a people of faith who look death straight on, without fear, knowing that Christ defeats death once for all. Death has lost its sting. And out of death, God brings life. We set this week apart from all other weeks because we do not wish to look away from the mystery of these days. Why God, the word, the light, the life, the bread, the good shepherd, the lamb who would lay down his life for us, his friends his brothers and sisters. We ask why? Why? So that we too might live and be free. On Thursday this week at seven, 
you can watch on Sammamish Hills Facebook page as Pastor Eric leads us through Monday Thursday worship in the evening. And then on Friday at 7 p.m., you can watch on Mount Sy Lutheran's Facebook page as I lead us through a Good Friday worship service. And then on Saturday, you can go to the Northwest Washington Synod webpage to watch an Easter vigil service. And you can participate in a 24-hour vigil via Zoom starting at 6.30 in the morning on Saturday and ending at 6.30 in the morning on Sunday by following the link and instructions on the Mount Sy Lutheran webpage, which will be up later this week. Brothers and sisters, this is a holy week. And I offer this poem in closing. It's titled, What I Wish for You This Holy Week. I wish for you a cross that is not padded, but one that breaks the easy hopes we are given and finds new reason to believe. I wish for you a crown that is not comfortable, but one that challenges the biased powers of the world and begins a new kind of kingdom. I wish for you a robe that's not purple, but is one that is torn and dirty from sheltering the poor and shapes a new way to live together. I wish for you bread that's not whole, but is broken and divided enough to feed the hungry and offer a new justice to all. I wish for you wine that is not sweet, but one that is sharp, and reminds us of the sacrifice that newly opens the gate of heaven. I wish for you a garden before sunrise, that you may be the first to see footprints of the gardener and exclaim anew, my Lord, it is you. Amen. Please join in singing Everlasting God.
invite everybody to stand or grab a hand with somebody near you as we profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Together we pray for the church, for our world, and for all those who are in need. Father, on this day we pray for your church. As we are more aware than ever, Lord, that we are together even though scattered, we pray for good communication from members to friends, friends to members, Christians to neighbors, Lord, that we might supply all that our neighbors need, that we might be aware of needs going unmet. And if we can't provide for those, Lord, find those who can. We pray, Lord, for care within our own body. May those who have needs not feel shamed. May they ask. May they reach out. May those who have things to spare, let, let, let others know what they have available, Lord. Guide us especially now to live in caring, loving relationships. Father, we pray for our world, especially world leaders who, who help guide us and help us engage the current COVID-19 epidemic. We thank you for those who are working with the medical community right now to get out positive, good, helpful information to help us make the right decisions we need to make in order to keep caring for our neighbors. We pray for stamina and strength as leaders of all communities of all sizes continue to sacrifice time and energy to make sure their communities, communities walk justly and rightly for and with each other at this time. We pray, Lord, for our own communities the places and spaces where we live. Lord, for food insecure families, may food banks be full. May schools have enough resources to continue providing lunches. May homes be open, if not so that people may walk inside, but at the very least so that necessary items of nourish nourishment and sustenance may be found. And Father, we pray especially for those that we know who are or who may be sick. Bring healing, Lord, to broken bodies. Bring peace to worried and fearful hearts. Bring hope to anxious souls, Lord. And where we have been empowered to reach out and serve, help us to do so. Today, whom shall the people of God lift up in prayer? I invite you to type any sort of prayer request you have in the comment section for the people listening to offer up in prayer this week. All these prayers we lift up, Lord, to you, knowing that you hear us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Together we pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please take some time to greet your, your fellow worshipers in the comment section below. How about a little peace be with you? I miss you. A few announcements from Samantha Shoals Lutheran Church. First of all, I want to thank all the people who contribute to Sunday worship, especially Sung Jun Lee, as he is the one who produces and puts all of this together for Anna Morris, for, for everybody who's added music and prayers this week and palms. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It helps us continue to be connected. I also want to continue to thank Mount Sai for partnering us and with Pastor. Krista, who keeps all the pastors sane during this time. 
I want to invite everybody, as Pastor Krista mentioned, to check out Facebook Live at 7 p.m. on Thursday and Friday for Monday Thursday devotion and a Good Friday devotion. Once again, all information about Sammamish Hills Lutheran Church's responses to our community as a church and to our community as a whole during the COVID-19 spread is posted on Facebook, is sent out in our regular, sometimes three times a week, e-blasts. How to get on those e-blasts is also in from that information is posted on our website. Or you can email me at P-R-E-R-I-C at S-H-L-C dot org. You can go to our website for that email address too, and I'll make sure you're getting all the information. Finally, as usual, our church requires and relies on your benevolence to continue ministering to and with our community at this time. You may give online at www.shlc.org. You may send checks in the mail to our church to the regular address. Thank you. Thank you for supporting your church during this time. Through us, we support our community. God bless you very much. Welcome, uh, brothers and sisters from Mount Sai Lutheran Church. Just a couple announcements to bring to your attention as we enter into this Holy Week. Um, we are still gathering for our Tuesday Bible study and Friday morning prayer, but please note that our Thursday evening Bible study will not uh, take place because we will be in our Monday Thursday worship at that time. We just ask that if you need anything to please be reaching out to the council folk who have been calling you or to myself so we can help you with whatever is going on. And we look forward to connecting with you over this holy week and in the days to come. At this time, I'd like to invite you to prepare for our offering. If that's going to Sammamish Hills Lutheran website or Mount Sinai Lutheran website, you're welcome to do so at this time to make an online donation, or you can prepare a check and get that ready to go in the mail as we take this moment to give thanks to God for all that we have. And uh, we give thanks for all of your continued generosity in this time. We just give thanks for you and all the gifts and blessings that you have to offer. And so let us uh, take this moment to extend our offering.
when it's closed together with prayer. Father, we thank you for this time to stop, to rest, to Sabbath, to worship, to hear the ways in which you wait and grieve and sit and also respond with us a new life in this epidemic. We pray that you would keep our hearts and minds open for all the ways we can continue to serve our community. We pray for peace in our homes, Lord, when we are connected so long and so deeply together during this time. Father, send us forth from worship today, Lord, not only with you in our hearts, but you in our hands to offer our neighbors. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. Today, as always, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's see you, we find strength.